Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2014 Audi S4. The S4 is a four-door sedan with seating for five. The S4 features all-wheel drive and a supercharged V6 engine. You'll notice four proximity sensors along the bumper in the rear. This is for assistance while parking or backing up. Now using the key fob the trunk can fully open. The trunk is a decent size, but you can fold down the rear seat 60-40 split for additional space. And one thing I do like is that it's a very rectangular shape. You know, it doesn't have wheel well arches coming in uh, and intruding on the trunk space. It's just a simple rectangular shape, so easy for fitting stuff. Now underneath the cover of the trunk, we have a spare tire. Now underneath the spare tire are the tools for changing out a spare and then the battery. So from a weight distribution point of view, it's pretty cool to see that they put the battery in the back and also very low. So keeping the weight, you know, distribution of the car pretty equal and then keeping the weight down low for a lower CG. Now regarding jumping the car, there are access points up front. So it's not like it's a pain and you have to come back here and do it. Uh, the only thing would be when you do need to replace the battery, uh, it is pretty large and then you're going to have to replace it out of the trunk. But access is pretty good, so not too big of a concern. Xenon headlights up front with LED daytime running lights. This vehicle features a coefficient of drag of 0.30. So let's have a look under the hood. There's a nice large handle in the center of it. You simply pull up on it and then you've got a gas shock to assist lifting it. So checking out the engine compartment, not a lot of extra space. Packaging is pretty much at its limit. Uh, checking for service points, you've got your air filter located over here with some Allen wrench screws to undo in order to get that out. Uh, you've got your oil fill location here and your engine coolant. Uh, now it looks like there is some sort of dipstick uh, access port right here, but dipstick not included. You've also got your windshield washer fluid back there, your brake reservoir here, and then a little access panel right here that you can remove in order to gain access to the positive battery terminal in order to charge the battery or jumpstart the car. Now, not a lot of covers in this compared to some other models, but it does still have some engine covers, uh, which can be pretty easily removed. And then you've got a little more uh, view of the supercharger here. This is an Eaton supercharger. This is a three liter supercharged V6 engine. It features 333 horsepower, 325 pound feet of torque. This has an aluminum block and heads, features dual overhead cams with four valves per cylinder and direct injection. So let's follow the path of the intake air. So we've got our air coming in here, passing through the filter and then headed back to the electronically controlled throttle body. From there, it heads inside of the Eaton supercharger, where it then passes through one of two intercoolers. These are air to water intercoolers, so you can see the inlet and outlet for the coolant, which is feeding a radiator up front. That air will pass through those intercoolers and then into the cylinders, where it will then head out uh, through the exhaust to the rear. The exhaust sent to the rear split between two pipes, where it's then split into one of two mufflers, each of which have two tailpipes. Power is sent from the V6 engine to a seven speed dual clutch transmission. This splits the torque 60% headed towards the rear and 40% headed up front. And the rear is actually a torque vectoring differential, which can vary the torque between one side to the other. If you'd like to learn more about how that works, I've got a video linked in the video description. 19 inch wheels all around with 255 over 35 continental tires. Up front, very large 13.6 inch ventilated disc brakes matched with a 5-link multi-link suspension. There you can see the large anti-roll bar above the steering linkage and next to it an aluminum control arm. So good to see aluminum used pretty well throughout the suspension here. One thing I'm not a fan of are these lug nut caps. These are just cheap plastic caps uh, and it's just another step that you have to remove these items and it's kind of difficult to get at it, so it requires this little tool that comes in the back of the car, and you can slip that over and then pull it off. But it's just another added step that's, you know, kind of unnecessary if you just had a nice bolt right there. In the rear, also very large ventilated disc brakes. These are 13 inches, matched with what Audi is calling a trapezoidal link rear axle. This is essentially a multi-link suspension, and as you can see, a separate coil spring and shock to allow for more space within the trunk. There in black you can see the anti-roll bar and also extensive use of aluminum in the rear suspension as well, so great reducing that unsprung mass. So let's have a look at the interior. Now with the key fob near, unlocking it is as simple as opening the door. 
And then to relock it, you can simply press that button on the outside of the handle. Another cool feature is you can actually turn the windows down and open up the sunroof by using the mechanical key from the key fob. So that can be pretty convenient on a hot summer day, something like that, where you'd like to let the car cool down a little bit before you get in it. Leather seats all the way around with eight-way electronically adjustable front driver's seat and four-way lumbar adjustment, as well as driver setting memories. So sitting in the interior, firm but very comfortable driver's seats, good snug feel. You've got plenty of space for your legs. Now your legs, if they do contact either of the sides, it is plastic where the contact occurs um, and, and hard, but you know, you've got plenty of space underneath the steering column, so plenty of leg room and also plenty of headroom. The steering wheel, very comfortable, kind of small, uh, but large handle on it basically, um, and not a lot of control right where your thumbs are. I'd like to see a little bit more control on the steering wheel itself. You've got your cruise control located down uh, behind the steering wheel, and it's kind of a far reach, so a lot of times when you are using cruise control, you're going to have to take your hand off in order to use that. It'd be nice to see it on the steering wheel. There also doesn't seem to be any way of skipping the song that you're playing, but you can adjust the volume up or down on the right side. You've got paddle shifters which turn with the wheel and they've got a nice textured feel to them and they're in the right 9 and 3 location. Uh, looking through at the display, you've got your big tack on the left and your speedometer on the right, and then some information in the center as well as your coolant temperature and the amount of fuel you have left. Now you have all kinds of features on the left side here. You can adjust the mirrors. Those are also able to defrost. You've got your driver memory settings, unlock and lock. You've got four automatic electric power windows. And then you can also lock the rear windows. Uh, and then you've got a trunk release here as well. And then you've got fog lights as well as automatic lights. And you can adjust the brightness of your display. Moving on to the multimedia interface, you've got a decent amount going on here. So you've got this little control here and it's got these four buttons, each of which represent the four corners uh, that you'd be looking at on your screen. The first thing you notice though is that this little scroll kind of acts opposite of what you would intuitively think it may do. So when you turn to the right, it goes up and when you turn to the left, it goes down. Just the opposite of what I was expecting, but either way it works just fine. You've got your parking brake here, your engine start stop, you've got navigation, you can connect it up with your smartphone, you've got radio, media, and then you actually have this car setting which is pretty cool and you can go in and change how the car behaves. You've got your engine transmission, you can set it to dynamic, comfort, or auto, probably changing some of the throttle settings. You've got your steering, which uh, either way, it, it doesn't have a whole lot of feel to it, but the comfort mode pretty much takes it all out completely, so I've left that on dynamic. Now, as I mentioned, it does have a torque vectoring differential, so you can change that between comfort, auto, and dynamic. And then engine sound, which I guess is kind of disappointing to see, just the artificial adjustment of what engine sound you may be hearing, you can choose between comfort, auto, and dynamic. Now you've got heated front seats for both the driver and front passenger, three different settings they can choose there, and different climate control settings, uh, different climate zones. And then here you have stability control, which you can put on sport mode, or you can hold it down and turn it completely off. Now as far as storage, you've got like a cup holder section up front in the door. Then you've got two cup holders here and a nice storage right here, which is great for fitting a phone. You've also got an ashtray, um, and I'm not sure what this is, but it does fit coins rather well. So it may be a quarter holder um, or just some vents. I'm not sure exactly, but it fits quarters rather well, so that's what I'm going to say it is. And you've got a good sized glove compartment. You've also got a center console with a 12 volt outlet inside and a decent amount of space in there. Now it does come with a sunroof which you can adjust between different settings. So you can actually adjust how open it is using a little knob underneath. So that's pretty cool. Now regarding visibility out the front and to the sides is pretty good and also checking your blind spot is pretty good. You also have uh, mirrors which indicate when there is someone in your blind spot so that's helpful. Looking out the rear, you know, it is a little bit small, but visibility is decent, and you also do have a rear view camera when you do put it in reverse. 
So sitting in the rear, I've got the front driver's seat adjusted to where I'll be driving, and as you can see, not really much leg room. Headroom is also pretty limited. I'm topping out, so I'm about 6'1", and sitting in the rear would be a bit of a challenge, especially for a longer trip. Now you do have AC vents back here, and also you have this center that folds down, and you've got a nice storage compartment as well as cup holders, so that's a nice feature to have for the rear passengers. Now, I did claim that this has seating for five, but because of this drive axle hump, you're really not gonna be able to sit somebody uh, unless they don't have any legs uh, in this center area in order to fit them in just because of how high up this axle hump comes. So let's take it for a test drive. Now it does have a push button start, but if you just have to use the key, you can stick it in the front and push it in to start it up. So not sure why that's necessary, but it's there if you want it. Now, first thing, the throttle pedal feel is actually pretty good, and the throttle response is insane. It's actually probably one of my favorite things about this, is just how quick it responds to you pushing your foot down. So if I do put it in manual mode, drop it down to second, and then plant my foot, I'm instantly put back in my seat. Very good application of the throttle, and the engine is quite strong. Very good uh, acceleration, and it's just an even torque throughout, so it just really plants you in your seat throughout the whole rev range, and like I was saying, that throttle response is just insane. I love that, and that's probably due to the fact that it does have a supercharger, so you don't have to worry about turbo lag with the forced induction. Fun car to drive. Now some of the other things, the braking, the braking feel is a little aggressive uh, and when you're doing some spirited driving, you know, it doesn't feel bad, it actually feels pretty good. But when you're driving around a parking lot or just kind of putting around, it does feel a little aggressive and a little overly sensitive. So, you know, just depending on how you drive it, it doesn't really uh, change and it just feels a bit aggressive, you know, for less spirited driving. So take that however it may affect you. Now, the steering feel honestly is a bit numb. You don't get a lot of feedback from it, um, even though you do have that dynamic and comfort mode. In the comfort mode, it really just feels completely effortless, so I've put it in the dynamic mode, uh, where you do get a little bit more feel, but even still, it doesn't feel really that natural. And one of the strange things is when you're on the highway, it actually kind of sends some torque left and right, so it wants to go clockwise or counterclockwise, and you kind of battle with it lightly while you're just going in a straight line and that I don't really like. So the steering I think could use a little bit of refinement. Now body roll and handling seems to be quite good. You know it's got that differential in the back which is capable of splitting the torque between the right and left sides and it just seems to do a really good job of staying flat and cornering pretty well and putting down that power. Now it does have paddle shifters and they're located on the steering wheel uh, and rotate with it and they're actually in the right spot, you know, 9 and 3 o'clock, they feel really good. Um, and so if we shift down here to, let's get in second and get on the throttle a bit. very quick shifts and very quick down shifts, which is also very impressive. So the dual clutch transmission doing a great job. Honestly, these are the best paddle shifters I've used so far. And before it, it was the Toyota Corolla. And I don't say that jokingly. Honestly, the Toyota Corolla had great paddle shifters, but it was a CVT and this dual clutch transmission handles the gear shifts much nicer. And like I was saying, that throttle response is just, you put your foot down and it's instant. Another cool feature it has is when you're on the highway and let's say you're in seventh, there's a little button at the bottom of the throttle pedal, so if you push it down all the way, you can tap that button and it'll automatically downshift to about third gear and then you've got tons of torque and you're off. So the seat's comfortable while you're going around the corner. The steering wheel does feel pretty good, the feeling of the steering wheel itself. The steering, like I said, could use improvement uh, and the paddle shifters are great. The throttle response and the amount of torque it delivers so instantly is seriously the greatest thing about this car. It is just so quick to accelerate when you put your foot down. It handles very well around these corners. Very fun car to drive. <laughs> thing is quick. 
70. Done. Very nice. So dropping back down to 65. Let's see what it sounds like here on the highway. Now this is a pretty bad road, but overall it's pretty quiet in here. You know, I could definitely speak at a normal voice and have a conversation with the person next to me, no problems at all. So now just demonstrating that shift down feature where you floor it and it presses a little button behind the gas pedal to downshift to third. So right now we are in seventh and I'll push my foot down now and we're in third. And it yelled at me for going the speed limit. Okay, so I've completed my fuel economy test course. This is about a 53 mile course, primarily highway with a little bit of city mixed in and some hills. And as you can see, this car achieved 27.3 miles per gallon. Now it's rated 18 in the city, 28 in the highway. So getting just under its highway rating, which is pretty good. And you know, considering that this is nearly a 4,000 pound car, it's supercharged, 333 horsepower V6, and it's all wheel drive. You know, all those things considered working against it in terms of fuel economy, 27.3 isn't too bad. So pretty impressive there. Okay, let's talk about the car overall, the things I like and the things that I don't like. Starting with the things that I don't like. Uh, so first of all the rear seats, you know, there's not a lot of space back there So it's not all that practical uh, for multiple passengers Also uh, the steering feel I think could use a bit of refinement Especially on the highway when you're on the highway It just kind of has these random torques left and right and you kind of have to battle against it Even when you're just going in a straight line and I think that's kind of strange And it's definitely not like a comfortable cruising to just have this light torque, you know Kind of trying to turn the wheel one way or the other now the brake pedal I also think at low speeds it just feels too aggressive uh, when you're in a parking lot or when you're just coming to a stop and you're just inching it's just kind of like a one stop motion so I think that could use a little bit of improvement but when you are driving pretty aggressively honestly it does feel pretty good. And finally, I just wish they didn't have that fake engine sound, uh, artificial, however they may be implementing it. And this just seems to be an industry problem that a lot of manufacturers are moving over to, uh, is these artificial sounds coming in just with emissions, you know, we're getting all these super efficient cars and I guess they're just not producing that much sound. And so they're implementing these alternatives to real engine noise and it's kind of disappointing that that's becoming a reality. And it's certainly not just Audi that's doing it, it's a lot of the manufacturers out there. Now moving on to the things that I do like. Number one is definitely the throttle response. You hit the gas and you go. Uh, the amount of torque it has is phenomenal. It's really a fun engine uh, and the dual clutch transmission seems great. Shifting is very smooth and quick. Also it's a comfortable ride, you know, not a whole lot of vibration coming through the seat or the steering wheel. And you know, the fact that it got 27 miles per gallon on my fuel economy run, that's pretty impressive too. This is a heavy car, so you know, that's, that's a big plus that you can, if you, you know, drive lightly, you can get 27 miles per gallon out of it, so that's pretty impressive. Also, the sound system in this is great. Not really any vibration out of the door panels and things like that. I don't hear any rattling. Just a nice, rich sound coming from the audio system in this. But honestly, the greatest thing for sure is just finding a twisty road, putting it in manual mode, and shifting your own gears with this dual clutch transmission. Very smooth, very quick, and just that throttle response, as I've said a hundred times, is fantastic. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.